Hello everyone, praise the Lord. God is always doing thousand things in our lives, but we may be aware of some of them, right? In Genesis 22, when God introduces himself, the Bible is his word after all, as a Jehovah Jireh, meaning the Lord will provide. And also Bible says in Old Testament, the Israelite escaped captivity in Egypt only to face the challenges of the desert. One of the biggest challenges for such a large group of travelers was enough food to eat. Over and over again, God provided supernaturally for his people. If uh, God could provide for many thousands of Israelites in the middle of a desert, he can surely provide for you and your family's needs. Amen. One of the precious testimony of scripture is, I have been young and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsake or his children begging for bread. But even with God's supernatural provision, the Israelites still complained and they grumbled in the desert. They longed for the food they left behind in Egypt. God was literally providing bread from heaven. Enough for each day, but they wanted his provision a different way. They wanted it their own way. Scripture tells us to make the pursuit of God the primary function of our lives. Matthew 6, Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added to you. Another scripture says, delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desire of your heart. It is so true, my friends. What is the deepest root of your joy? What God gives to you or what God is to you? God graciously guides us into a greater realization that our ultimate need is for more of his word, more of his ways, more of him. We ask God for many things, but the greatest things we could ever receive from him has already been given. What God has given us in, a, in the gospel is light. Years ahead of every other provision and care we could ever seek from him. When we trust in Christ, we have decisively secured for us every ultimately good things from him. It's just a matter of time. Every truly good things in our lives comes straight from the Father. The ultimate good he provides us through whom much of the other good things come to us is Jesus. Jesus is the ultimate treasure. Amen. So Genesis 22, Jehovah Jireh. Who is Jehovah Jireh? Jehovah is the name of God as the ever dependable covenant keeping Lord, whose character is eternally consistent and whose word never fails. God appeared in this name to Moses in the narrative of the burning bush as we read in Exodus 6. God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am the Lord Jehovah. And he says, I appear to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob as God Almighty Al Shaddai. But my name Lord Jehovah was not known to them. In this narrative, God points out that he was revealed to Abraham mainly as Al Shaddai, meaning all sufficient God, but was now being revealed as Jehovah, meaning the unchanging, ever faithful, covenant keeping Lord. Through these names, Moses was being taught that God was not only able to keep his covenant promises as Al Shaddai, but he was dependable. He is Jehovah, the eternal, unchangeable, the great I am. The actual history of the word comes from two Latin phrases. Although the idea goes back further than that, pro 
wider literally means to see before there are at least 169 verses in the bible that refer to the way god provides for us like any good parent god would never give us what he knows would harm us his intent is to help us to develop christ likeness so that we become salt and light in the world god is concerned with every part of our being spirit soul and body as the facts of his character are infinite so the way god provides for us are beyond anything we can ask or imagine he sees ahead of you the god of all creation sees you and sees ahead of you personally he knows your past he knows your present he knows your future the pain and the hardship of tomorrow is not a surprise to god who sees ahead the worry about how the bill will uh, get paid and is not a surprise to him as well and god not only does he see ahead in a passive way but he goes ahead in an active way in the lord's prayer jesus teaches his disciples to ask for provision and our dependence on god is affirmed each time we pray give us this day our daily bread in matthew 6 jesus tells his disciples not to worry about food or clothing the father knows our needs he desires covenant relationship with us and that involves trusting him to meet our daily requirements and seeking first his kingdom and righteousness amen many passages you know about god's provision relate to our need for food and clothing and the daily physical needs of life other refer to the needs of our soul and spirit our inner man but if god so clothes the grass of the field which today is alive and a tomorrow is thrown into the oven will he not much more clothe you question mark no god doesn't just know tomorrow but he exercises you know control over it and actively he actively meets our needs especially our biggest need the eternal spiritual need of salvation so it doesn't matter where we are in life god sees where we are he knows where he is leading us and he knows how to provide for us along the way so in genesis 22 we read the story of abraham being commanded by god to take his son isaac to mount moriah and sacrifice him isaac was the son of promise a miraculous gift from god when abraham and sarah were old he was the promised child whom god had promised to make into a great nation he was god's provision or so it seemed until god said to lay him on the altar and offer him as a sacrifice after these things god tested abraham and said to him abraham and he said here i am he said take your son and your only son isaac whom you love and go to the land of moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which i shall tell you he saddled his donkey and made his way with his son isaac to the land of moriah as they ascended the mountain his son isaac spoke to his father abraham my father and father said here i am my son and isaac said look the fire and the wood but where is the lamp for the burnt offering the father said my son god will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering so the two of them went together when they came to the place of which god had told him abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound isaac his son 
and laid him on the altar on top of the wood oh my god and the scripture says just as abraham were ready to offer isaac as a sacrifice god spoke and cried stop don't harm him god provides a ram to be sacrificed in isaac's place knowing god's character we know that the lord would never participate in child sacrifice an angel intervenes in the story after all. Hmm. We all make question, but why in the world would God go about testing Abraham in this way? Why couldn't God test Abraham in another way that didn't involve nearly killing his son? Strong faith is often exercised with strong trials. This means that sometimes we have to go through fire to reveal the true nature of our faith and whether we have built strong foundation of trust in the Lord. Amen. If you see in Daniel chapter 3 story of Shatrach, Meshach and Abednego when the three men refused to bow down and worship the idol of God of Babylon King Nebuchadnezzar had them thrown into the fiery furnace which is which was heated seven times hotter than normal oh my god and Shatrach, Meshach and the Bible says Shatrach, Meshach and Abednego had faith that God would save them till last minute God didn't show up when the king Nebuchadnezzar looked into the fire the scripture says he saw four men walking around in the fiery furnace unharmed unharmed who were they Shatrak, Meshach and Abednego and the son of God the king Nebuchadnezzar brought the young men out of the flames and promoted them to the higher office and decreed that the God of Israel to be worshipped hallelujah in this case of Abraham, God had located the number one idol in his heart, his only son, Isaac. He wanted to test Abraham's loyalty by showing him the one area of his life where he had held back. Abraham obeyed Hebrew chapter 11 says, tells us that he acted in faith that God would raise Isaac. He obeyed in the belief that God would provide a miracle of some kind and God did. He provided a ram as a substitute sacrifice and Isaac was spared going on to become the father of the nation of Israel. Amen. And Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide Jehovah Jireh as it is said to this day in the mountain of the Lord it shall be provided. There is nothing in this life that we need so much as to do the will of our Father in heaven. All outward wants are poor compared with that. The one thing worth living for, the one thing which being secured, we are blessed. And scripture says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. God provides everything we have and need as the creator of our lives. Therefore, have faith that God will provide what is best for you. Give thanks for all you have to the Lord and trust in him. Scripture quotes about how God provides for our physical, emotional and spiritual needs. The Bible tells us, and my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. As story unfolds further, we read God had planned for Isaac's family. He had a wife specifically for Isaac. Years in the future, when Isaac is approaching 40, he was meditating and praying in the field when his wife Rebecca came to him. And the Lord filled Isaac's heart with love 
for the young woman who would become his wife. And the two became part of the lineage of Christ. The Lord had made promises to Abraham about this young man. Not only did God provide for Isaac's life, but also for his future as part of God's promise to bring Christ into the world. God not only provided for Abraham, but he also provided his only son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Ever since Adam's sin in the Garden of Eden, in Genesis chapter 3 and 4, men and women have needed a sacrifice to bring them into a correct relationship with God. God himself would provide a substitute, an offering, to answer man's deepest need by bringing about a right relationship with God. God will provide himself a lamb. The answer is found in the deep heart of God, Jehovah Jireh. Often, as Christians, we can think of the Old Testament and the New Testament as a separate entities, but they point to each other. And this passage amplifies that Abraham and Isaac reenact something that would take place a millennium later. God will provide and he will do it on the Mount of the Lord. Over 2,000 years later, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, walked towards Golgotha with the cross on his back. Jesus had already been pointed out by the prophet John the Baptist as the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus himself had told the Jews, your father Abraham, rejoice to see my day and he saw it and was glad christ was the only sacrifice who could meet the need of humankind every other sacrifice was inadequate and was merely a faint picture of his sacrifice on the cross knowing god's character we know that he wouldn't follow through with making abraham commit human sacrifice after all God later talks against this practice. Abraham's actions mirror those of God in the New Testament. Those who witnessed Jesus' death in the Jewish community would have known their roots. They would have remembered that on the same hill, God had asked Abraham to give up his only son, Isaac. On the same hill in which Abraham nearly sacrificed his son, same place Jesus died for our sins. Hallelujah. God will never ask us to kill anyone to test us. Abraham's experience was to show us the great love God had for his son, Jesus. Yet, he was willing to allow his son to die for our sins. God could have called 10,000 angels to save Jesus, but he knew the only way for us to be saved was for Jesus, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God to suffer for our sins. God does not always provide and care for us in way we might expect in this life. The Bible does not promise this. You know, his disciple Peter, James, John, Paul gave their very life for the gospel. They viewed the gospel as a treasure, not to be lost at any cost. They suffered gl gladly because they had something in the gospel that had far more worth. Someone said, this life is fleeting, this life is fragile, this life is but a wave of breath. The next life, the age to come, is where all God's provision and care for us will ultimately make sense and come together as a whole. Apostle Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, 
forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Someday God's provision and care may seem distant, but it will be ever present in eternity. We long for our world to stop raging and be at peace, but ultimately peace will only come in eternity. Our heartache under the pressure of this life, but it is only because we were made for another world. You know, Jesus was praying for his disciples, you know, before his crucifixion. And uh, he, said, he said to his father, they are not of the world even as I am not of it. We are different, we are alien on this earth. Scripture says, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own position, that you may proclaim the excellences of him, who called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light, amen? Let's pray. Abba Father, thank you for your great love and blessing over our lives. Thank you for your son Jesus. Thank you for Holy Spirit who guides us. Thank you that your favor has no end. We ask that, you, that we would walk in your blessings and goodness uh, today and forever. That your face would shine on us. That you would open the right door for our lives and for our loved ones, that you would close the wrong doors and protect us from those we need to walk away from. I ask all this in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. That's all for now. Until we meet again, God bless you and Shalom.